In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise be God, God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies, and the God of all consolation. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive bread and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies, and the God of all consolation. steadfast love you draw us to yourself and in mercy you receive our prayers strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the spirit that through life and death we may live in your son jesus christ our savior and lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen The first lesson from the second book of Samuel, the 11th chapter. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go forth to battle, David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David arose from his couch and was walking upon the roof of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful. And David sent and inquired about the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So David sent messengers and took her. And she came to him, and he lay with her. Now she was purifying herself from her uncleanness. Then she returned to her house, and the woman conceived. And she sent and told David, I am with child. So David sent word to Joab, Send me Uriah the Hittite. 
and Joab sent Uriah to David. Here ends the reading. The second lesson from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit for forty days in the wilderness, tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing in those days, and when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it shall all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him up to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will give his angels charge of you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Here ends the reading. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. We continue our Lenten Discipline Review of the Lord's Prayer as we look at the sixth petition, and lead us not into temptation. The contemporary version of the Lord's Prayer, also included in our hymnal, translates this petition a little differently. It says, save us from the time of trial. I like that contemporary wording better, though both versions are getting at the same thing through the petition. This is because the word tempt means to test or to try. Luther's explanation to the sixth petition begins by telling us God tempts no one to sin. This means that God is not going to dangle something enticing in front of us to see if we will sin. God does not desire anyone should sin and fall out of, a reliving, out of a living relationship with him. Only one time in Scripture does God lead someone into being tempted as a test or trial. This one instance is the one we heard in our lesson from Luke, where Jesus was led to be tempted by the devil in the wilderness. Did you note who led Jesus to this temptation event? Jesus was led by God the Holy Spirit to the wilderness to face temptation. This temptation was complete. The devil went after Jesus' physical, bodily needs, trying to capitalize on his hunger after fasting for 40 days. Command these stones to become bread. In other words, Jesus, satisfy yourself physically. The devil appealed to Jesus' soul, his emotional ego and temptation for power and control. I will give you all authority and all the glory and riches of the world if you'll worship me. In other words, Jesus become the richest, most powerful and controlling person in the world by following the devil's greed and rebellion. The devil appeared to Jesus' spirit 
his life in obedience to his Father's will to save the world. Throw yourself down from the pinnacle of the temple as a show. Jesus, get your followers through doing showing th showy things rather than following the way of a servant that leads to a cross. In other words, Jesus, avoid God's way and make it easier on yourself to become a popular leader. So what is going on here? One pastor said that when Jesus showed up, the devil told his army of demons that we have a problem. Here is someone who is God that we cannot defeat so easily as other people. We hear this as Jesus begins to cast out demons. They tell Jesus, we know who you are, the Son of God. And Jesus silences him. What is happening in the wilderness is the devil trying to get Jesus to fall, to disobey his father and abandon God's way that will defeat the devil. Note that the temptations in the wilderness is just after Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist. The devil wants Jesus to fall right away in his ministry. But it is the Holy Spirit who leads Jesus to this wilderness temptation event. Jesus, God the Son, takes on the devil head on right away. And this is the only time God leads someone to be tempted to sin. And God knows that Jesus will defeat the devil. The defeat of the devil begins early in Jesus' ministry. But there is an ominous statement at the end of this event in the lesson. Luke tells us, And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. And that time was Good Friday. So, if God tempts no one to sin, what does it mean for us to pray, lead us not into temptation? Luther continues in the explanation of the sixth petition. But we ask in this prayer that God would watch over us and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our sinful self may not deceive us and draw us into false belief, despair, and other great and shameful sins. This is why I like the more contemporary version of the petition save us from the time of trial. What we are praying when we ask, lead us not into temptation, is that God will watch over us and keep us from those temptations, those things that would test or try us so strongly that we would lose our belief, faith, and confidence in God and cause us to be lost in sin and despair. We are asking God to save us from those tests or trials that endanger our lives as his people. What is important to note is where these temptations, these tests and trials can come from. Luther in his explanation says there are three sources of these. The first source is the devil the one who wants to separate us eternally from God and bring us to eternal punishment. Luther emphasizes the evil powers that entice us spiritually away from God and faithful life in him. The second source is the world. Luther warns us of the lure of power, riches, and entertainment of the world that threaten to move us away from God and a godly life. 
and that encourage us to rely on ourselves and our possessions for life instead of relying and trusting in God. The third source is perhaps the most surprising, our sinful self. We can follow our inclinations through original sin to look for ways to sin and not resist temptations and tests or trials. Even pillars of the faith are not immune from falling prey to their sinful selves. An example is from the lesson we read from 2 Samuel, where even the mighty King David falls into sin because of his sinful and evil lusts and desires by committing adultery with Bathsheba. He knew she was married to Uriah, who was serving faithfully in the army, but David could not resist his own drive to sin. He forced Bathsheba to commit adultery, and when a pregnancy resulted, David had Uriah killed in battle, carefully planning Uriah's murder in order to conceal his sin. David thought he had hidden his sin well, but God knew what he had done and told David his guilt through the prophet Nathan. David's sin resulted in God's punishment. The baby died. Luther reminds us our sinful selves can tempt, test, and try us, and we may be in danger of losing our obedience and faith as a result. Sometimes we have to be protected from ourselves. Even David was challenged in this. In the sixth petition, we request that God watch over us so that these sources of temptation, testing, trial, the devil, the world, and our sinful selves may not be so strong that we lose our faith. This leads us to the final part of Luther's explanation. We know we will not be able to keep God's commands perfectly. There will be those times of temptation, testing, and trial where we fall into sin. When we pray, lead us not into temptation, Luther reminds us, and we pray that even though we are so tempted, we may still win the final victory. We pray for this final victory because Jesus was tempted and did not fall in sin. Jesus resisted perfectly and faithfully the temptations, the tests, the trials of the devil, the world, and his own desires that would have led him away from his Father. But on the cross, he took our sin, our failure, and destroyed their power in his resurrection. It is through Jesus alone that we have God's final victory over the power of sin and death. It is only because of the victory and grace of Jesus that we can pray that in him we may still win the final victory. In our Lenten journey, Lord God, we confess that we need your continual grace and forgiveness. We thank you that you do not hold our sins against us. We also confess that we have not trusted completely in you when tempted and tested and tried by the devil. We have been too willing to follow the temptations and ways of the world instead of your ways. We have too often followed our own sinful wants and desires instead of faithfully following your Son in ways of obedience, trust, and serving others. 
Help us to repent and return to you. Receive your grace and forgiveness and amend our sinful lives. Lord God, lead us not into temptation. Save us from the time of trial. Keep us from those situations and circumstances that would tempt us, would test us, would try us so strongly that we would be in danger of losing our faith and trust in you and be left in sin and despair. As your love and grace continue to keep and save us, help us to respond to your goodness by committing ourselves to living more godly lives according to your will and grant that we may win the final victory through your Son so that we may be filled with your life both now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you are worthy to be held in reverence by all the mortal race. We give you thanks for the innumerable blessings which, despite our unworthiness, you have showered upon us. We praise you especially that you have preserved for us in their purity your saving word and the sacred ordinances of your house. Grant and preserve to your church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors who shall preach your word with power and help all who hear rightly to understand and firmly to believe your word of truth. Protect and defend your people in time of tribulation and danger that we, in communion with your church and in unity with all Christian people, may fight the good fight of faith and in the end receive the fullness of salvation. Upon all the nations of the earth bestow your grace. Especially we ask you to bless our land and all its inhabitants and all who are in authority. Cause your glory to dwell among us and let mercy and truth justice and peace everywhere prevail. We commend to your care all our schools, that virtue and useful knowledge may be nourished and the wholesome fruits of life may abound. In your mercy defend us from all calamities by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine. Protect and prosper all who labor and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Show yourself to be the helper of the sick and needy, the comforter of the forsaken and distressed. And as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us to prepare for the world to come, 
doing the work which you have given us to do while it is day, before that night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour shall come, support us by your power and receive us into your everlasting kingdom, where with your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign God forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.